And he comes out and he says, I'm looking for the Codemaster Talon. Like how I, I went like slightly academic with it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's, soft, it's, 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 it's soft graphics. G. Yeah. Graphical user interface. Soft G. It's not a hard G. It's it's this thing that just came out of a strange portal, and uh, uh, um, yeah. I don't even know the difference between soft and hard G. Besides, one is handwriting and looks smooth, and the other one is. <laughs> and there's Fong. Fong is doing some things. He's Fong is doing some Fong bullshit. The and uh, the other one is made of uh, jelly. And the other one's delicious and made of jelly. <laughs> it's great with custard, you know. I am already so tired of this episode. Um, so Bob, uh, you know, he gets his glitch and he's all, he, this is, this is, I'm having a lot of trouble with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A, a soft G is like somebody from the hood, right? But like <laughs> he's got a few extra pounds <laughs> on him. Good, good uh. for cuddling, not so much like gangbanging. That's a soft G. I don't know what anybody's doing in this episode. This episode is totally pointless. Why? Why? Alpha Mary! Reboot! What's it gonna add? You're prepared for a giant monster made entirely of nulls stomping around mainframe? I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> How do you plan for that? Is this still happening? Salivations, sprites! Welcome back to another episode of Alpha Numeric, the podcast where some 90s kids talk about an animated TV show, Reboot. I am one of your hosts, NeoCal. And I am another host, Christopher Siege. We usually have um, AP Snidler with us, Aiden, uh, but he is... Uh, busy doing like IRL things, I guess. He cannot yes, uh, join us today. Yes, car troubles was the uh, was the word on the street. Yeah. So, uh, so we 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 wish him well with that, and uh, he will be back next week. Yes, and um, what an episode to be absent from, because let me tell you that this is this is probably a good episode to be absent from. Uh, yeah. Um, High Code, ladies and gentlemen. Um, episode two of season two. Yeah, this uh, this this season of reboot is not getting off to a great start. <laughs> I remember you mentioning, oh yeah, like season two is when it picks up. Uh, uh yeah, I I think it's about like ep- episode three or four onward. Okay, okay. <laughs> So, like, it's I know like it's the worst thing ever, but I mean, I don't even remember this episode. And the villain is just so forgettable. Not uh, cool. I, I remember this one. This episode used to play in reruns a lot when I was a kid. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, High Code. It originally aired on September 7th, 1995. Just, uh, just to cover that base. <laughs> yeah, so uh High Code uh starts like every other episode of Reboot with a shot from like the Energon Ocean. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna go with that's what that's what mainframe's floating on. And uh we whirl around to the uh the principal office, uh more notably the giant white orb above it. Yep, the, right. the, be- the beach ball. Yeah, the beach ball. And there's an energy thing, and an uh, alien is inside of it. Shit. And, like, a very convoluted, like, like design. I. He's like an insect, but he's also like a xenomorph, but I, I don't know. I-, I think it's shitty looking. Almost like a sh- skinny cell from Dragon Ball Z. I... <laughs> I actually think his design is pretty. His design is fairly intricate compared to everything else in the show, especially at this point. Mm, th- that's the problem I have with it. I don't. I don't need an intricate design, right? It kind of takes away from the 
simplistic like colors and shapes of the show. Mm. Like he, he doesn't look like he he fits in reboot. Yeah, well, yeah, because this is clearly a new model that they made specifically for this episode. But I feel like uh, the models of all of the other characters, they're just still reusing the same character models from last season. That'd be my guess. Oh, well, no, I don't have a problem with any of the models or any of that stuff. Like I like I said, I, I, I like how simplistic everything is, right? Yeah. But I don't like how he looks he doesn't look like he's from mainframe which is the point of this episode i suppose yeah but um yeah our uh, starting shot after that is bob working on his car again except dots there helping and um honestly it's it's just basic yada 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 bullshit going on here she's like oh you looking for this throws him like some sonic screwdriver <laughs> they they try starting his car it blows bob up and he like flies across the room and she's like why don't you hire a professional and he says something like um he's, he's like but i'm a guardian i should be able to handle this or something like that yeah it's my like duty so that's a little i, I think it's funny it's a little tongue-in-cheek like a man should be able to fix his own car <laughs> Right, like yeah. that, a little low, low reboot version of like that male um, stereotype that, like, oh, a man should fix his own car. But he's guardian, right? Like, I, I guess he's supposed to know how tools work and machines work. I, I suppose, guess. Yeah. I don't want to jump, jump onto the oh, it's toxic masculinity. But it's what it, um, it's, it's implying yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not necessarily toxic masculinity, but traditional maybe, masculinity. Yeah, yeah maybe there's nothing toxic about it. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of an outdated idea of masculinity. And and Dodd even like handles it like where she gives him a recommendation, he doesn't listen, he gets exploded. He's like, "Ooh, I'm supposed to mend and defend, remember? It's tradition." <laughs> yes. Well, clearly, I would not make a very good guardian because, <laughs> or I cannot... you would be just as good as Bob because he he doesn't know how cars work either. Well, I mean, for the past like what? How many episodes have there been? This is like the fifteenth episode now. Uh, for the past like fourteen episodes that preceded this, we haven't really seen Bob be uh, be great at anything. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, right? As, <laughs> as I've joked many times, this is he is clearly fresh out of the academy, and this is his first posting. Police academy, guardian academy, citizens on patrol. An episode. We could write an episode of police academy. I mean, with, a guardian. With, I was gonna say, like with Bob. Yeah. Like it's a prequel to to reboot. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. But, and uh, his his, uh, his first sense. assignment is to take on the Highlander Viking. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, <laughs> uh, listeners. That was a little uh, nod to uh, something we talked about on episode twenty-two of Too Much Energon. So check that out. Oddly extensive conversation about it, too. Yeah. That we were actually serious about. We're like, hang on. <laughs> Why aren't there more Vikings? Viking uh, mortals. Yeah. Um, uh, and... so, so Bug Guy. Yeah, Bug Guy. So does Bob have, like, a a guardian sense? Or is it because this creature is not from mainframe? It, like, tingles his, like, weird guardian senses. Yeah, this is weird. When I was watching this episode a few days ago, I, I was like, like this part of the the episode. I was like, I I've never seen Bob like like I've never seen Bob like have spider sense essentially. And no. I don't remember any other episode where he has this. So it's it's strange. Oh, it doesn't I'm, happen again after? Yeah, not that I recall. Maybe it's because it's an entity that's like 
not normal in a system because we even see it leap from the um, the principal office into like some sort of like little portal. Like it, it can it can use portals or little tears to transport itself. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like the it's like the spot from uh, Spider Man comics. <laughs> He's this dude who throws, he's this dude, he's this like dude in a white like jumpsuit covered in like little black spots that he can pull off of them and throw and create Oh, portals. that motherfucker, right? Yeah. <laughs> actually cooler, actually cooler than he sounds. He has like, sp- they do other things too. Like the different colored ones do different, different things. I read his wiki one time. Yeah, he's a character that's mostly played for laughs, but like th- a character like that, you could actually make into a pretty menacing villain if you wanted to. Because like, how how do you like how do you stop someone like that? And it's just his suit, right? Like he has no powers. It's the suit that's special. Uh, I think like his so, jumpsuit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he pulls the little spots off. <laughs> I read his wiki one time for like twenty minutes, and I was like, "Holy shit! <laughs> how do you more like- polka dot man?" <laughs> You're like, what is this character? <laughs> so Bob oh, senses something's wrong with the Matrix. Oh, and uh, uh, to get back on the Highlander train, this is actually some an, an ability that immortals have as well. They they can sense oh, when other immortals are around. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... Um... I just watched a show where people could like sense each other. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Jojo. Stand users can like they they get a weird feel and they're like subconscious. It's not that they know when others are around them, like they can tell who it is. They they're subconsciously like attracted to each other, right? So you might be like, hmm, I could go for some coffee, and you'll like drift towards a coffee shop where then another stand user might be working or getting coffee at. Mm. So yeah, he he senses another immortal is. <laughs> Is in uh, mainframe. Yeah, come to claim his head, and he's like, "Yeah, there's something, there's there's something wrong here. I can feel it." And uh, we're we're at the principal office in the uh, uh, the library room, uh, and where old man Fong is like smacking a monitor and not knowing how to use a computer, like an old man. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, portal opens up, and Bugman steps through, and he's all like, "I'm here for the Codemaster Talon of the Seventh Brotherhood." And Fong's right? and like, I'm "Just like, whoa, whoa, that's a lot of that's a lot of info to take in all at once." Start yeah. over. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> and Fong's like, "There's no one here by that name." And Bugman is all like, "Bullshit! I know the Code Thrasher is here. Tell me where he is." bitch and then fong goes ah and turns around and like tries to run yeah and the the uh the bug man like leaps over him and does a backflip and he's got these two like batons that he carries and he puts them together as like a big like uh uh staff weapon a bow if you will Yeah, he becomes like a oh yeah bow staff um yeah he becomes like um darth maul (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> right? Like the handles in the middle and Yeah. And uh Fong tries to run away the opposite way and I thought he was gonna throw it at him, but like he this guy's a wizard, I guess, because he just throws like a magic ball at him. Like and it's purple. We've seen a lot of like greens and blues, right? But like we've it's interesting. See what I mean about how there's like a color palette of um mainframe of, of reboot? And that's why this guy with his complex, like, little, all of his little parts and his color scheme feels so far removed from mainframe. He's gold and green. And all of his, like, he's got all of these, like, like little armor pieces that make up his body. And he's spindly and he has this weird, like, like staff, Mm -hmm. right? Whereas the polygon count on all the other characters are a lot boxier, simpler. Right, and they're all like green, blue, silvers, some red here or there. Right. So his weird magic staff, because he's a wizard, I guess, um, the code master, and uh, his like color scheme makes him feel like he's 
alien, which is funny because he looks like an alien too. So I'll give the episode credit for that. He definitely doesn't feel like he... Like he belongs. He belongs, yeah. But like, instead of like, ooh, he's from another system, or he's from the web or the net, I'm of the opinion he doesn't even belong in the show. But that might be my bias for not liking the episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, like I said, I actually, I, I kind of dig how I, 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 re- I, I respect how intricately designed he is especially compared to all of the other characters in the show up to this point yeah yeah. i i guess we have different reactions i don't like that i don't like how intricate he is and i like how simple everyone else is but he's he's neat looking oh i'll give you that so um well if you master if i i don't know if you recall but uh in season three the the uh, character designs and animation quality takes a giant leap forward. I don't really recall, so I guess I'll I'll get to experience that fresh. Sweet. And um, blew my mind when I was twelve. And it'll blow my mind when I'm in my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> um, it shows Fong like apparently frozen, not just trapped in this like little purple energy bubble. And uh, we cut to old man Pearson's data dump with Enzo yeah. like zipping around literally on his zip board. And um, he like stops at like a, a shed, like a shack. And Frisk gets there. Yep. And uh, he says, um, what, what do they do? The, basically, the summary of this is he's looking for parts for his air cart. Don't really, I'm, I'm assuming it's like a like a car, but it hovers. Like a go-kart, but, you know, something like that. And um, Yes, uh, actually, I know what he's talking about. I believe oh. it appears in a upcoming episode, because I know I've seen it. It, oh, okay, it, essentially, cool. it essentially looks like a go-kart, but instead of having wheels, it has, like, four, like, zip board oh. <laughs> circles on it, basically. I have, I don't know when I, we see it, but, like, I, I have this image in my head of it. So, so it's somewhere. It's, it's some, somewhere. We'll, I, I, we'll see it at some point. So presumably so, that's what he's talking about. Frisket and Enzo aren't really ones to like strictly follow rules because there's a clear kind of like do not enter like road sign, like nailed to the door. Um, yeah. So no they entry. they straight they up in? commit. Yeah, they commit unlawful entry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think Frisket like tosses it with his mouth. Yeah, there it is. He tosses the sign with his mouth, and he's like, "What sign? Am I right?" <laughs> uh, I'm like, that's not how that works. <laughs> uh, I, I I get that kind of rationale though, because <laughs> I was totally that kid. Yeah. If well, I don't I'm, see it, yeah, it isn't I was there. Like that too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they they scroll stroll in here, and um, this. So clearly, old man Pearson's storing like junk in here that's important to him, or at least hor- he's a hoarder. Yeah, because... I think en- I think Enzo calls it old man Pearson's private stash. Ye- oh, interesting. Yeah, and um, he picks something up that looks like a <sighs> like a rice cooker combined with a bagpipe. Yeah, <laughs> because like, oh man, who'd ever want to scrap uh w- whatever this is. And for some perplexing reason, <laughs> Frisket like takes a deep breath and blows into it as if he he knows what it is, and it plays the um, the reboot theme, but like through bagpipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I guess Frisket can play the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really know uh, what to add to that. Yeah, yeah, but, and uh, uh, Enzo finds the part that he's looking for, and then Old Man Pearson bursts in and is all like, "Is all like, now listen here, you little shits, get out of my, get out of my shed, right?" Basically, yeah, yeah. He uh, he find yeah before Old Man Pearson gets in there. I don't know. He like finds a part of his bong or something like that, like roll across the floor. Do you remember that? 
like part yeah. of his water bong like a bunch of like stuff rolls across the ground <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> it kind of reminded me of like some sort of drug paraphernalia and old man pearson's like don't touch that <laughs> uh, he's like get out of here before you hurt yourself you little shit and all, um an alarm goes off and uh yeah. we hear the voice of the uh uh of the bug guy and he's all like attention mainframe i am looking for the code blaster by the name of talon and old man Pearson starts shaking. He's looking real nervous. And the oh, I didn't the, catch that before. Yeah, he's like visibly trembling. And uh, we we cut to outside the the principal office, and uh, uh, the the bug guy is talking to all the mainframe through these giant ass vid windows that surround the uh, the principal office. Yeah, so he's taken over some control of the principal office to some degree to send this message out, presumably. Yeah. And uh, Bob and Dot are zipping into uh, to action, and Bob's all like, harm mainframe? I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> like how you pronounce the H. Harm mainframe? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh uh, so they they arrive at the front steps of the principal office, and uh, Bugman is there with his like, uh, yeah, he's just chilling there. Yeah, he's just like, hanging I'm out in front. Of all the police and uh, Bob. Yeah, and uh, he's got Bob or not Bob. He's got Fong still in the uh, yeah. the the purple bubble thing. Yeah, Bob, Bob's like, okay, Mister, listen <laughs> here. Yeah, he's like waving like, his well, finger. <laughs> he's like, listen here, you young punk. Let go of Fong. And he's like, okay. And he just does. Yeah. The Codemaster like waves his wizard staff and like Fong just lands on the ground. And uh yeah, and the bug man is like, You're no code thrasher. You are a guardian. <laughs> he is and not a code thrasher. And Bob is like, and you, you're a code master. From the web? And everybody gasps. So this is the one of the first times, like like I said, I haven't watched this since actually the 90s. Like, I never rewatched Reboot as an adult, right? And oh, so I this did. is the oh, first wow. time. I, I did, I think, about 10 years ago. Mm. So, like, they're all gasping. So the web is presumably something frightening. Yeah, because the binomes. Because Bugman is like, no, lucky for you, I am from the net, and I'm like, what the fuck is the difference? <laughs> well, in real life, the, n none. But I have a theory about that. I, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it now. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. It's um, it, it's on topic. I think the net is the internet, and the web is the the deep web. That's it. That's all. Mm. The dark web, perhaps? Yeah. Well, the dark web is part of the, the deep web, right? Like, it's the, the, the darkest, most bottom layer where the pedos share their CP and you can hire hitmen. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you're, so, and if you're uh, one of the skids in Letterkenny, it's something you're really, really into. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The dark web? I tried to buy drugs from the dark web once. Never <laughs> got anything. Just lost some money. <laughs> Still badass, though. <laughs> uh, uh, purchased with Dogecoin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know I have Dogecoin. <laughs> uh, I was about to be like, really? But then I'm like, no. I, I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I am amazed that it is actually worth something. I bought it for the memes, for the lulls, and uh, it became something. Wow. Uh, let me get Google. Uh, how much are Dogecoin? I've never purchased any kind of cryptocurrency. 
Um, I have so many friends, so many like wannabe stock market cryptocurrency like friends. Uh, uh, I'm going to say acquaintances, like work acquaintances, who all they would they would check it all day. They talk about it with each other. They got our boss like interested in it. The long story short is they all lost money. Yeah. Like every every single one of them. Yeah, I remember for uh, for a couple of years there, like everyone started accepting Bitcoin, like even big like corporations and right? stuff started accepting Bitcoin as a payment. Like on the EB Games website for like, I think about a year there, you could actually pay in Bitcoin. Huh, really? Like, yeah, it was like it was that widespread. You could buy shit on Steam with Bitcoin. Um uh and yeah no it yeah it was this thing where like like even big companies were like yeah bitcoin woo and now no one accepts it anymore well the problem is for a while the people that made any money from it were the people that were already rich so i've this is what happens then the same thing happened to me people go ooh what's this cryptocurrency thing right and they, they go, ooh, they, they, they learn what it is. They do some Googling. They find out what it is. They go, oh, well, how do I buy it? They realize it's like kind of like complicated and a pain in the ass to buy it. You can buy parts of a, a Bitcoin. They yeah. realize it's unstable. They realize all people only sell them for a profit. Mm-hmm. And after a couple hours, they, they realize it's more trouble than it's worth. But... A lot of apps and stuff, trading apps and stuff, made it easier for the everyman to buy into cryptocurrency, right? Right. So imagine stocks where the... Stonks. Imagine stonks <laughs> where <laughs> the it's, it's literally, it's, its value is only in its um, demand, and its demand is completely artificial. It's, it's what people are willing to pay for it. Like, but like to this to the point where like cryptocurrency like doesn't even really represent anything, IRL like you say like stocks do. Stocks is certain shares in a like a, a company, right? Yeah. And you're like, hey, this company is like doing this and this. I think they will make money, so I will buy some stocks with them. Well, cryptocurrency. What was happening is like billionaires and like millionaires were buying a bunch of it, right? When yeah. And then the price would start to go up. A whole bunch of people without money. Again, it's the rich making money off the poor. Tale as old as time. Then when it starts to go up, people go, hey, it's going up. And like the everyman like, starts buying it, right? Yeah. And then all at once, all the rich people start, they, they start calling each other and go, huh, have your people and my people sell it at midnight on this date. Oh, yes, quite, right? And so the everyman like wakes up, right? And they go and look and they're like, hey, I bought like a uh, Bitcoin for like $900. And they go and like look and it's like worth like 350 now. And they go, what, what the fuck happened? And it's because every, anyone with any larger amount just, there's, not, there's no such thing as insider training, uh, trading with um, cryptocurrency, right? So you could exploit the fuck out of it. You could artificially inflate it. You, it, anyways, every single fucking person I know ever, like, l- lost money on that hard. And meanwhile, one of my coworkers who who was like laughing at them and is like, "Don't, don't ever put any money in that shit. That's stupid." Um, he was investing in North American um uh, stocks for uh, different marijuana companies that were before they were going legal, right? Mm. And he he's actually made a, like a fair amount of money. Some some weren't great investments, but for the most part, he invested wisely. And in, because he the legalization um, when it came, the companies that were involved with that ended up um, becoming much more valuable. Um, I think there was one person who said that they had a friend that bought like like bitcoin like almost a decade ago or something like that who just kept on 
to his bitcoins and never like sold them and he, he just believed in cryptocurrency he was like this techie person he's never going to sell them like no matter what he's he's just in it for the long haul i wonder how that guy's doing now anyways that's my rant about that dogecoin let's see one dogecoin is worth um almost one cent <laughs> 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 this is a good finale to my rant, huh? Uh, yeah, that was perfect. Uh, the lesson here, folks: buy gold. I, it, he's not wrong. <laughs> um, it's worth point zero zero nine three seven four of a U.S. dollar. So it is almost worth one cent. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> I see my my Dogecoin stonk has gone up greatly. Uh, <laughs> what did you pay for it, if you don't mind saying? Oh, what was it? I bought like $5 in Dogecoin like ages ago and then forgot that I did it. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to buy another five. And then I was like, oh, like it's it's worth more. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I can make like, like, you know, $30. I'm surprised this like actually went up. And then I forgot about it and I haven't checked it for years. And now here I am. And they're <laughs> worth. <laughs> so, so it is, it is my, my $5 investment. My, my stonk has crashed. <laughs> it was a bad investment. <laughs> oh, man. And I think they were worth more than that when I bought, when I bought them. Your stonk has been nullified. It, it literally has. I, I was not expecting that. <laughs> oh. you, can, you can edit out me. Man, I I don't know why I talk about boring, dry things for that long. <laughs> I talked about like how stocks and like cryptocurrencies, from an amateur, like I'm probably wrong about <laughs> half the shit I said, I talked about that for way too long, but I'm glad I ended on a good note. <laughs> on my Dogecoin. Oh, now uh, it's worth point zero zero nine one one nine. Looks like it's gone down. <laughs> <laughs> In the past, like, what, two minutes? In the, in the past few minutes, yeah. Amazing. It's a live, live, um, live feed of Dogecoin here, people. <laughs> you know that, uh, what was that show? Mad Money with the, the, the stock market, like, dude? No, uh, but what was... maybe a listener does. I can't remember. He was like a bald dude, and he'd yell, and there'd be stonks flying across the screen at the bottom, and be talking about, like, um, uh, like companies to bail on, companies to get on, and he'd hit, like, giant red or, like, green buttons oh okay i think i know what you're talking about yeah yeah i think it was mad money yeah um but yeah it turns out he was like hired by companies to do that and his reactions to certain companies would actually influence the stock market so like companies started like paying him to invest and that kind of thing and he was kind of like outed yeah, that that doesn't sound completely legal. Uh, you know what? I wonder if that that's a good point. I wonder if he faced any repercussion for that. Cuz like yeah, cuz uh I mean, insider trading is uh extremely illegal and that's like basically just manipulating the the stock market for your own gain. I think that's technically not insider trading, but I'm te technically not it is influencing it, but it's not um insider trading exactly, right? So like insider trading is um like having access to confidential like information from a company. So let's say you know a company is going to um, acquire another company. It's going to end up buying it, right? And so you buy or sell or whatever um, to, to reflect that, and you end up like capitalizing it 
that's that's insider trading, which still happens a fuck ton. Um, mm. But that's illegal. Whereas just Knowing no that, that this guy mad money, um, by saying, "Hey, this company's like going places." And invest stonks. They're going kind of like how like paying him to say that like you know paying him to do that is kind of like how politicians are allowed to accept quote donations end quote from oil mm. companies right like it's it's it falls in the line of technically legal whether it's like eth- it, but... whether whether it's ethical or not however is another story i would say it is not but whatever you got to do to make your millions and fucking bail on their shitty tv show i guess you know what we got to do to make our millions and bail on our shitty TV show? Finish reviewing this episode. <laughs> That's like the weirdest, longest rant, off-topic rant like we've ever gone on. Like, why the fuck did we talk about like actual stonks for 15 minutes? Whatever. Anyways, um, so the stonk master is <laughs> like he, uh, he's so competent and full of himself. What's his name? Does he even say? He doesn't. Oh, he's just the code master a code master yeah who demands talon bring me talon i want pictures of talon <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, as he has a cigar in his mouth but he well he's got he he's a bug but he has this like translator like laser device and it kind of like glows when he talks so it's suggesting that he actually doesn't speak you know those people that have their vocal cords removed because of like cancer? Yeah. And they, they talk with a little device like that. It's like an insect is talking like to them through that little device. So you know what? I'm coming around. I actually like that like golden thing coming across his face. I'm gonna yeah, it's maybe that that lets him speak English. It translates insect to to English. Or whatever language they speak. Or <laughs> re, re, uh, mainframe me in. Mainframe in. Mainframe in. Mainframe in. Mainframe in. Oh, I like how um, squ- squished out and stretched um, the JPEG of the binomes in the background is <laughs> in this scene. Uh, but yeah, he's like, Where's Talon? I want pictures of Talon. And uh, they're like, uh, nobody's named Talon in mainframe. And he like sends Bob on a like a splash mountain ride. Yeah, he like a... he he takes his staff and shoots this like purple beam at Bob that like throws him into the air. And as Bob is in the flying in the air, he still has this like purple thing underneath of him carrying him upward. And then it. It uh, disappears, and Bob's like, I hate it when this happens. So, uh, seemingly this happens to Bob a lot, I guess. Yeah, he seemed very, um, what's the word, nonchalant, very comfortable with being, like, a couple kilometers up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, he starts glitch, I guess. Yeah, uh, so he starts falling down, and he's like, glitch, paraglider. And glitch does the thing. And he yeah. sails back toward the principal office and gets shot with another purple laser <laughs> that uh, uh, turns surrounds him, him top. and turns him into the Tasmanian devil spinning around and then fucks off. But uh, some of that purple shit stayed on his forearm uh, and thus disabling Glitch. Yeah, so he shoots purple gunk onto Glitch, disabling it from doing anything. Yeah. With and, his... And Annie. Bugman is like, uh, since you refuse to deliver Talon, then I will find him myself, even if it means taking mainframe, or taking apart mainframe, sector by sector. 
And he goes through a portal and he literally starts doing that. Buildings are just like falling over. And I'm like, dude, that doesn't help you find someone. That just destroys buildings. Yeah. <laughs> you dick. That just wrecks the place and make people not want to help you. <laughs> yeah. So he's clearly so powerful that he's not worried about like anything. Right? Like he let Fong go. He's basically like handled uh bob with like relative ease right so he's like such a powerful entity that like nobody can really deal with him or stop him if you're so powerful like why are you like godzilla ing like through mainframe well yeah and we we get a shot of him uh uh teleporting to another part of mainframe and like he's not even looking for talon he just like shoots like a purple laser or like a purple like uh, burst burst fire thing at a building and knocks it over. Yeah, like you were and saying, just... like that's that's not going to help you find the dude you're looking for. You're just fucking shit up. I don't I don't see what his plan you, is. Okay, here. so yeah, we both were like, I I guess that's what bad guys do. <laughs> and it uh, seems weird for this character. And uh, dot. Uh, strangely enough, uh, calls Megabyte, of all people, for help. This... I I actually think that's a good call. It's like, hey, um, I know you're a virus, but there's something threatening, like, all of Mainframe, and you live in Mainframe, so do you want to help? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a good call. It's like wow, like Bob can't even help, and um, um, Megabyte's just kind of like dismissive, and he's like, "Oh, why would I help you?" And what is it? Uh, Dot wants she she doesn't want like help like fighting him or whatever. She wants to um, pay him for all of his like transporters, his um, like those APCs, those hover tanks. I I, I'm, I presume. Yeah, to to get to uh, Pete to evacuate Maine for him. And he's like, eh, nah. And besides, um, Codemasters and viruses don't get along. Yeah, they have unpleasant history. Um, I kind of wanted like, to see him like fight Mega Megabyte here. Uh, and Dot's like, well, shit, dog. And uh, back at the principal office, uh, um, Bob is in sick bay lying on a table and uh fong is examining him like trying to figure out how to get the the purple shit off of glitch and it's apparently a uh high density field time lock mechanism that is impossible to remove and can only be removed by a code trasher code trasher so, uh, um, yeah, so Bob's like, well, shit, I gotta go, f guess I gotta go deal with this guy then. So he gets up and leaves. Um, yep. and Fong's like, no, wait, don't do that. And Bob's like, oh, why do I get the feeling you're not telling me something? Mm-hmm. And so the truth comes out. Yeah. Uh, so Fong takes him to a uh, dark room with a like holographic thing of uh, Bugman, and explains that explains to Bob that uh, Code Masters are apparently like inter-system eliminators. I believe is what he says. Something like that, yeah. Wielding great power. And uh, Bob's like, oh, yeah, I studied that. I read about them in school, but I never ran into one in the supercomputer. Hmm. And uh, they're apparently they're the most uh, uh, vicious. Their order that they're a part of are the most like vicious uh, killers in any system, the web and even the net. So they're ma like Mandalorian. <laughs> like bounty hunters yeah like, what the, do they do what what are they i i yeah they they capture destroy and erase uh 
whomever they're paid to is what Fong so says. So it sounds so, like they're mercenaries. Yeah, they're, mer- they're mercs. But they have some sort of code of honor. So, like, uh, in the John Wick universe. <laughs> Where their currency are shiny gold coins. Yeah. I and only saw that he's... movie once. But I just remember there being some kind of honor system amongst all these assassins. Which I'm... Which is odd. Yeah, so I need to get on the John Wick train. I really like the first one, but I only saw it once. Likewise, and I haven't seen the sequels. I haven't seen the sec, the second or third. Yeah, neither have I. Um, it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna watch those movies or whatever. I just, I, they're 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 there. They're waiting for me. Yeah, yeah, I'll watch them eventually. <laughs> yeah, same with me. Like they're they're on the list, but like I'm in no hurry to see them, and I'm not uh, I'm not avoiding them for any specific reason. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah same. <laughs> just haven't got to them. There's usually something else I'd rather watch if I go down to sit a movie. <laughs> <laughs> if I sit down, go and sit down to watch a movie, I'm usually in the mood for something else. Yeah, but the um, the gist of it is there's this like secret assassin organization, and they use like gold coins, and there's an assassin hotel, and like the hotel is off limits from what I remember from the first one, and you yeah. lose your like assassin guild privileges if you like try to attack somebody in in the hotel, and I'm like, yeah. how do I get a job in this place? <laughs> Uh, so Fong is like, uh, yeah, one of the uh, one of these uh, code smashers uh, came to mainframe long ago seeking refuge, and uh, I took him in, and he changed his identity. And Bob's like, "Whoa, what the fuck? You took in a code, a code master? Who is he?" And Fong's like, "Nah, nah, se- secrets, right, right." I'm like, okay, Fong, like, fuck off. Like, people are presumably <laughs> dying. Can you, like, just fucking tell me? And, yeah, and it's not like he, he has to tell ev- Like, Bob's a guardian. Like, yeah. Like, He's Bob's- like, he swore an oath of secrecy. And I'm Bob, like, oh, Bob, okay, now's Bob not the like time. like, peak good guy in mainframe. <laughs> like, you can tell him shit. Yeah. Like, and what ends up happening is they end up finding out who it is anyway. So, like, why the secrecy? Like, wh- when, when, when are you going to spill the beans when, like, half of Mainframe's buildings are knocked over? We, we find out that, uh, uh, apparently the, uh, uh, Bugman's weapon is called the, oh god, I just had it, what was it? Oh yeah, what was it? Yeah. <sighs> Um, the Gibson Coil Pike. Gibson Coil Pike. Hmm. I think the Pike is kind of unnecessary. Like, either call it the Gibson Coil or the Gibson Pike. Yeah, I like like that too. I like Gibson Coil more, but Gibson Pike would also be fine. I don't like Gibson Coil Pike. It's it's a lot to say. (laughs) (laughs) And like a coil and a pike are two different things. E, well, you can wrap a coil around a pike. Right, okay, right? fair, fair, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, get, get, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so the 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 Gibson pike is uh, apparently super deadly. And uh, Enzo is listening in for some reason and is all like, is all like, oh, shit. And he re- uh, and he takes off. And uh, is zipping around on a zip board, singing a like really bad like riff on the 60s Batman theme. Going Uh-oh. nano, 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 oh, nano, 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 is. nano, code breaker or whatever. Yeah, um, I forgot about that. 
yeah, it it kind of made me cringe a little bit. And I love it's... the '60s Batman show. <laughs> I I even though I just watched this yesterday, I for forgot about that. So interesting. I watched this it... on I watched this on Monday, which and... uh is four days ago now at the time of recording it's interesting instead of going hey bob i think i know who he is follow me he's like time to go talk to him myself (laughs) he's a he's a plucky young sprite you think he would have learned to get help by now but no so he goes and um he flies in and uh talks to old man pearson old man pearson but why? Because apparently he saw a Gibson coil at his shop earlier, which I don't remember that at all. That's the little water bong that like rolls out from a box. Okay. That I was all making right. fun of. Okay. <laughs> it, looks, it just looks like a piece of glass. It could be fucking anything. I don't not thinking, oh, that's a Jedi wizard staff. <laughs> So it's weird that Enzo, of all people, would go, aha! But I mean, you know, plot devices, I guess. Yeah. And uh, he goes and bugs old man Pearson, who's like welding something or working on something. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you're Talon. And uh, old man Pearson is like, fuck off, kid. Yeah. He's like, but you got to do something before mainframes toasted. And he's like, charty, charty, char, I can't. I swore when I came, quit the guild, that I would never delete anyone ever again. So then, yeah, he just like admits that he, to this kid, he's in hiding and he just admits to this fucking kid that he is the, uh, an (laughs) ex-assassin. Like, like, okay. (laughs) I, I found that strange, too. You'd think he'd just never open up about that, ever. He'd be like, oh, I left my my killing people for higher days behind me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, very weird thing to tell, tell a 10-year-old. Yeah, like, that's that's not how you stay incognito there, bro. Right? And he's like, but you gotta face the Codemaster. You got the pike. You know how to use it. And I'm like, this guy's a Jedi? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Wow, I, I really don't like this episode. <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, he's like, but you gotta help. And he's like, I said no, now get out of my hair. And he's like, I take it back. If you were really Talon, then you would have helped us. You're just a cowardly old boomer. And he like zips away on his... On his zip board. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he just leaves Frisket there. And Frisket kind of, like, turns to, to Old Man Pearson and kind of gives him a look. And Old Man Pearson's like, oh, now don't you start with me. And he, like, wanders off to go keep working on whatever it is he was working on. So we're we're two episodes in to the second season of Reboot. And uh, presumably at the end of this season, after this season, uh, much like after last season, we're going to do a special top three and bottom three uh, episode. Mm -hmm. I already have two potential (laughs) contenders for my bottom three. (laughs) Or is it the top three? Stay tuned and find (laughs) out. Uh, Yeah, check back with us in about two months and find out. So we got some destroyed mainframe going on. Yep, and uh, uh, Bugman is like doing some shit on a roof, and then Bob shows up and grabs this thing that looks like it's some kind of some kind of industrial like uh, equipment, but it kind of looks like a flying arm or like a flying a flying pincher, like. of like cons- like hover constructo bot like something that would pick up something and like levitate and like drop it somewhere else like a sideways forklift maybe yeah it also kind of looks like a dick <laughs> does it 
I think it kind of does. It's like a dick just flying through the air. Not everything is a dick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's even like it's even got balls hanging down. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not normally one to make dick jokes, so that should uh, tell you how invested I am in this episode. <laughs> I'm not normally one to make dick jokes. Somebody can go back and um, like do a compilation of all the times Christopher has, has made dick jokes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it hasn't been that much, that much. I can't think of any off the top of my head at the moment. So uh, Bob tries to uh, to grab um, Bugman with this thing, and Bugman jumps out of the way. And it now, fails appa- miserably. Yeah, now apparently his uh, his lacuna coil can like <laughs> create a purple lasso. I yeah, because it, it does, does everything. He's a wizard. It only does everything. His staff yeah. is a PlayStation Three. <laughs> it uh shoots buildings over and lassoes guardians lassoes lassoes what does it say on the side of uh this hover bike thing uh i can't read it can't see the text let me see if i can figure it out uh um, I think the last word is rather. Rather? Oh, I thought it was battle. Yeah, I can't see what it says. It says something on his bike. Right? It says a thing. Yeah, it says a thing. But, uh, yeah. Um, Bugman is like, well, at least you're a persistent guardian. Um, and then, oh shit, warning, incoming game. Yeah, he's like, well, I guess uh, since you're getting in my way, I have to delete you too. But there's a game! And he even turns to Bob, and he's like, what is this incoming game? Which I found kind of hokey because, like, if this guy has, like, traveled, like, all over the web and the net and yada, 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 he has to be familiar with the concept of that's, GameCubes. That's what I was thinking. Like, this is this just a phenomenon in mainframe? It can't be. It isn't. Like, it, it actually isn't, though. And, like, that's the thing oh, we find out. Remember, in the, in the future, yeah, it's definitely yeah. not. It's very common. Yeah. Almost every system has games. Yeah. So, like, this guy, like, how good of an assassin can he be, like, if he doesn't know what a game is? What, is he just in and out before he's ever heard, like, warning, incoming game? And, like, no one has even ever talked about the concept of a game to him before? Oh, that's a good point. If he's trained from the net, how is it even possible that he's never even heard of this concept? Yeah. Huh. Okay. This episode's getting that's a worse. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> I, that that's a a bad point that I skimmed over. I thought he was yeah, cuz the web is different. If he was from the web, I'd be like, "Oh, okay. Well, that's a scary, spooky space place." But like presumably this guy assassinates people in different systems. Yeah. That'd be I my guess. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he was able and, to enter mainframe easily enough, so... Yeah. And um, Bob, like, bullshits him. He's like, yeah, it's a power even greater than yours. And he, Codemaster is like, how can a mere game have more power than me, the most powerful Codemaster? And so now, suddenly, this guy is power-hungry? I... Like, what? what are his motive... Like... Like is, I yeah, is he I thought trying to be the best is is it another Highlander thing? Like I, I only one. <laughs> I I thought he was just here because he was hired to to kill another uh uh another uh codemaster. Yeah. So like what? But now he's like 
tempted by the promise of gaining more power. Like, okay. Nothing about this character thus far has suggested that this is something he is on the lookout for. Inconsistent about what his motivations are? Yeah. So he's like, why don't you hop on and I'll go show you. And he goes, hmm, very well. And he unlassos Bob. And they drive off to go to the game together. Yeah, he he says, uh, it's landing in an un uninhabited sector no one around just you and me and the power and i'm like all right (laughs) and then it's revealed um through a conversation with uh fong and dot she's like oh what is he doing and um, fong is like oh uh the stranger that's what they kind of talk him um doesn't know how game works um if they user wins, then Bob will nullify the stranger, um, mm-hmm. rendering him powerless to to harm mainframe. And Dot's like nullify the stranger, but that means Bob will be, oh no, yeah. So they just figured out he's going to throw the game or help the user, and he'll go down with them, but he'll he'll stop the Codemaster. And again, Codemaster, stupid as fuck. Holy shit, do I not think this is a good character. Um, <laughs> but, like, pretty honorable of, of Bob. Yeah. But, like, do we do we know that uh, that uh, Bugman will be nullified? He yeah, is what pretty if powerful. they're not affected by it? it yeah. Can, it can, like, render Glitch useless? The Guardian Key Tool useless? Yeah. What is to say he's even affected by games the same way yeah so yeah <laughs> none of these questions and more will be answered by the end of this podcast <laughs> and um oh jeez, the game even sucks in this episode it is a wild west game uh um, like they're they're not there's not even a full building when they like spawn into the game it's like a, a hollywood cutout that i actually find that kind of funny <laughs> Because, like, it's obviously intentional that mm-hmm. it's like a it straight up a like Hollywood, like an old school, like Hollywood Wild West town cut out yep. of a building, like a standee. Yeah, Bob even says a Wild West game. How fitting. And the, I'm like, the, is it? Th- this building has a a sign on it that says Spuzzum. <laughs> Spuzzum. I would, just, I would just like to point that out. What's For spuzzum? no real reason. I just think Spuzzum sounds funny. I think so too. I don't know what it means. I'm sure somebody listening will can in Alucar, if you're listening, uh what does spasm mean on this episode? Yeah, Alucar or Cone Killer Confusor. Yeah. Either one of you, you fill us in. Go and, and look it up, but I mean I'm like a little mentally checked out of this this episode. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, and Bob's like, ooh, Wild West, how fitting. And I'm like, is it? Why is it fitting? Is it because the Codemaster can can use energy lassos? <laughs> I I don't know why it's fitting. And the, the Code Thrasher is even like, ah, where is this power? And he's like, oh, I'll show you. But first, uh, take this lock off glitch. Um, have you ever noticed, have you noticed how I, like naive I, Code I, Thrasher I do- is? It is. It. I, I. I actually see how it could be kind of fitting because the concept of a common Western trope is for like a retired like outlaw who's like living in like a peaceful little town who is like out of the game, and someone like comes back. Someone mm-hmm. from their past like comes back to hunt them down. That's a pretty common trope in westerns, and that's essentially that, that's what this episode point. is. So, That's a good point, but the thing is, Old Man Pearson's not in the game. So, I see what you mean, though. That 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 is a little bit fitting for the episode itself. Yeah. But like, if Old Man Pearson was in the game, you know what? I think that would have made the episode better if he was in the game and both of their like little magic wizard staffs like didn't have any power. Mm. But instead, you oh, this game fucking sucks. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so he, the code trasher tries to 
like remove his stasis lock on I hate this man. This is so dumb. <laughs> he tries to remove his stasis field on um glitch and it doesn't work and the stranger says my weapon does not function here and i'm like okay your weapon doesn't function but the energy like block on glitch still works that doesn't i i didn't even think of that but that's a great point yeah yeah the energy shield around glitch should disappear when he, they went into the game so what lo- the lock stays on there but he can't use his like weapon that Make up your mind. Like, it, it directly, like, contradicts itself. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, Bob's like, that makes two of us. So now none of them have their magic, like, artifacts to help them. Yep. And even the game looks, like, super low polygon. So Bob and... is like, is like, well, let's see what the game has for us. And he reboots. and. Uh... The the code slasher like leaps back, and uh, in Bob, shock, yeah, in shock, yeah, and Bob like reboots predictably into a cowboy wearing like a fucking bright red shirt, as uh, cowboys were known to have. <laughs> uh, actually, um, eh, this was a joke too in Back to the Future Part Three, like. You remember uh, Marty McFly when the 1950s Doc Brown gives him a cowboy outfit and it's like white and pink. Vaguely. In old in old black and white westerns, they actually would wear like really bright colors like pinks and yellows and whites. Um, so they're like so their outfits would show up better in black and white. Mm, I've heard that. Yeah. The high bright colors so that uh the camera captures them better yeah and he's wearing yeah he's wearing some blue jeans and some chaps and he's got like two sets of facial hair which confuses me <laughs> oh i see like one he, he, is like he's five got o'clock a shadow yeah he's got a five and o'clock shadow and and a stash yeah or some sort of stash around his mouth yeah a, a and, handlebar uh, mustache that wraps around, yeah, I'm, some something like that. And I uh, believe that's actually called a handlebar mustache. Oh, it doesn't wrap around his chin. Yeah, uh, I thought it wrapped around his mouth. No, it doesn't quite. Well, the handlebar goes out; it connects in the middle, and then it goes down, and it looks like handlebars. Okay. His is a little different. A little different. If if he had hair on his chin too, it would be a Van Dyke. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. And um, he's like, "Oh, there's the user. We have to get on this train, but it's not stopping." And the user kind of like is a cowboy wearing a a suit, um, and he kind of like tips his hat, and he's got that same same stupid face that all the users tend to have. This like snarky like smirk. Yeah, especially uh the, the user is in the uh summer games in Enzo the Smart. Yeah, he, he looks like one of one of them. Yeah. And the train goes on by. And he's like, Oh man, we missed it. And for some reason, again, contradicting itself, the stranger grabs Bob and points his staff at the train, extends it. Like Goku San's, like, you know, thousand mile staff. Yeah. And it latches onto the back of the train and he, like, pulls both of them onto the, the train. And I'm like, bro, you just said that your powers don't work here. <laughs> I don't. Is it extending, uh, not part of its power set? Maybe it's, it's just a natural the, thing it could do. Yeah. Maybe it's just the, the energy component. And, uh, uh, his extendo staff was just uh, mechanical. Uh, mechanical, it, yeah, yeah, maybe. I yeah, sure. <laughs> let's yeah, go exactly. With that. Let's let's go with that. And, and the codemaster's like, "What is objective of this game?" And Bob's like, "To beat the user to the next station." And I'm like, "Is this the shortest game in ever?" This sounds super boring. <laughs> like, what kind of video game would this be? 
Um, Unless they're like rebooting in when, and this is just to like a later a single, level. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like a, a later level, like the user's been playing like an hour or a half hour or something like that, right? Because there have been episodes where they've rebooted in and they're like, oh, we're on the final level. Yeah, I've always wondered about that. It's like, what if they rebooted in to a saved game where, like, the, <laughs> what the if, user what if, is just, like, trying to see the different endings? Yeah. yeah, what if they, like, reboot and they, the user to like the user has, like, an autosave where he's, like, right about to go meet the final boss and they reboot, like, in the first level? Yeah. <laughs> Presumably it's like, they don't. It's like, well, right? I guess we're fucked. Right? Um, or uh, the they user is loading like a save file right before the ending, and he's just loading that to see the ending again. And they're like, oh, this game, huh? Seems the user's on the final, and then like the, the, the end cinematic just starts. And they're like, <laughs> and they're oh, nullified. <laughs> shit. Maybe maybe the the game wouldn't do that to them. I, I don't know. I'm thinking about this too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I guess really, like uh, the game wouldn't have any need to load sprites into previous levels that the user has already been to if they're not there. Like there would be no need for them to actually spawn in an earlier level because the game like wouldn't have that information loaded. The B. That's that's my guess. Did I did I lose you? Oh my god, I wonder how long I've been talking with my mic muted. Um <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Like it's it's relevant information, right? Why would they load to uh a level that like the user isn't even loaded? Yeah. Like if they were playing Hitman, right? That would be a cool one to see them in. Um, yeah, would right. they load to a different mission? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in in typical like Western fashion, they um, go across one of those big like wooden bridges, across a canyon. Yeah, and um, the user like knocks some logs loose from like one of the. Uh, one of the cars. Yeah. And, and they... um, it knocks the stranger off the bridge. Yeah. And uh, Bob's like, man, I've got to help the user. <laughs> um, and uh, Bugman is like fighting with uh, the user and on one of the, the carts. Mm -hmm. Up ahead. Up ahead. Yeah. And uh he falls off, and then Bob catches him, and then throws <laughs> him back onto the uh, onto the cart. I imagine what the user's experiencing there. He's like, "Oh fuck, I got knocked off. I've never seen this like bug enemy before." And then like one of the sprites in the back just goes, huh, and alley oops <laughs> you back up onto the the cart, and you're like, "Oh, that's weird. It's a cool glitch, but it's weird." I look forward to the day in video game programming where AI becomes complex enough that it can, like, the AI, in-game AI can just go rogue like that sometimes. <laughs> just do <laughs> weird stuff. Yeah, and you'll just get, like, a random, like, a character that's supposed to be an enemy just randomly starts helping you for, and you're like, what the fuck? Why? For their own reasons? Yeah. Like some Westworld shit? Like yeah. They that... have their own motivations and relationships? Yeah, like, that would be really cool. Well, story wise, like like I, I know in like a lot of games, uh like if you accidentally shoot your allies or well there are some games if you do evil things or you there are certain triggers, um, your allies can like turn on you. Yeah, yeah. Like in Fallout games, if you have a good character with you and you do bad stuff, they'll like say like oh, I can't be part of this and just, like, walk away from you or straight up just fight you. But yeah, it's I've I've also been in games where, like, a, a third-party enemy comes and you just kind of stop fighting each other and, like, fight this other thing. Like, I've played games where I'm, I've been playing Fallout, right? And I've been, like, shooting at raiders and then, like, a super mutant, 
like behemoth just like comes out of nowhere and everybody just kind of stops and goes oh shit and you just start firing at the the bigger threat i've i've had that happen in a number of games like you'll be fighting with like bandits and shit in skyrim and a dragon will just fly over overhead and all of a sudden the bandits are like do i do i, do I fight the dragon do i do i run but I, I i don't know how how i survive this situation yeah they're still bad guys, though. They don't go, ha, huh, we're now brothers because we fought and killed a dragon together. <laughs> yeah, as soon as the, the larger threat is dealt with, they just start shooting at you again. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, indeed, the user doesn't seem to recognize that Bob is helping him, and he just kind of runs towards the head of the, the train. And yeah, the stranger and he... gets pissed. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, uh... Um, Bugman gets pissed off and he's all like to Bob, he grabs Bob and is all like I thought I told you to fuck off basically <laughs> yeah what have you done T- now T- we've lost and he's like picking Bob up by the, the hat and I'm like why how's he holding Bob like that <laughs> oh that I didn't even think of that yeah. yeah he's like picking Bob up like effortlessly but he's picking him up by the hat and Bob's <laughs> just like dangling there by the hat with his arms crossed he's like yeah oh. what a shame and I'm like shouldn't he fall out of the hat or when you reboot are like all the pieces like attached to you uh, I think I might actually make that the show art for this episode <laughs> him just like holding like dangling like Bob yeah <laughs> Bob's like got his got, got his arms crossed, <laughs> right? <laughs> Defying physics. All right, I have taken. Maybe the hat is out. really tight, or he's like crunching his head through the hat. Sure, why not? <laughs> All right, I have taken a screenshot of that for uh, editing purposes. Yeah, and he's like, "What are you doing? Now we're gonna lose." And Bob's like, "Total nullification times two. And he looks kind of pleased with, with himself. I know, I know Bob is like weirdly jovial about this. I like a man and a woman who can face death like that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what you gonna do? That's what you get for being a code trasher. <laughs> um Yeah, yeah. there's even kind of a song like a like a like a, a, a quiet moment when they go through a tunnel and the uh code trasher like gets hit by the stereotypically um not stereotypically like kind of like uh, the trope where you're on a train and the person facing you doesn't see what's coming so bob ducks and it it hits the stranger instead of him and he kind of has a moment where he's by himself and bob's like you know i'm gonna miss these games and my friends and well, uh, what are the... you gonna do yeah, the stranger <laughs> looks up at him like because he's prone on his back. He's like, "You would give your own life for them," and he's like, "Yeah, you know, tradition, because <laughs> the uh, uh, the cr- um, the code smasher has been all like talking about tradition off and on throughout the episode, mm. which I don't think we've mentioned. Um, oh, we mentioned the word tradition once. Oh well." Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, on the other side of this ravine is the user's train, and we see that Enzo is actually in the game, and the user has him hostage. Hmm. So now the 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 turns have tabled. The turns have tabled. So Bob is like, "Well, better do something." So he throws. Yeah, it's not a matter of just his life. It's yeah, saving Enzo. So he throws a, a a lasso all the way to the other side of the <laughs> ravine and manages to loop around the um uh, what the fuck is it called? Yeah, he throws it the, like the, the three hundred, part... four hundred feet across the ravine. Yeah, and the... catches the front of the train. Oh, we forgot the the user detached um the carts. Yeah, so they're far behind them. I thought I mentioned that. Maybe or I just maybe, thought, maybe you maybe did. I just thought it. I don't know. This <laughs> or we thought trash. it. <laughs> but yeah, he lassos this train amazingly. Yeah, but I... What is it called though? The the part of the the locomotive where the actual smoke comes out of. Uh, the caboose. No, that's the back. Yeah. Uh, 
the the steamy part the 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 engine cab the no the, um, like the the actual like pipe at the front of the locomotive where the 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 smoke comes out oh that like little pipe thing uh is it it's essentially the exhaust pipe yeah the giant thing that shoots the smoke that everybody knows about <laughs> Yes, yes. Anyway, I can't remember. It, it has a name. I don't I know. Is it a chimney? It is it a chimney? No. Steam I, you know pipe? What? You know what? I'm I'm looking it up now. <laughs> oh, because... he's go- he's looking it up. <laughs> uh, loco motive, <laughs> locomotion. Do the lo- do the locomotion. Uh. See if the Wikipedia page will tell me the parts of a locomotive. See, the most interesting part is us <laughs> wick- googling the parts of a, of a train. Yeah, this is good radio right here. Me <laughs> reading Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> well, while he's looking that up, I'm, I'll describe what happened here. Um, the front of the, 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 the chimney thing of the, the front part of the train, um, he throws a rope. By the way, it would mean that he would have to have like a 300-foot rope on him. I don't know if you know how much rope weighs, but <laughs> it would be a giant stack of rope. But we're in a video game here, right? Presumably he can throw it as far as he can shoot a gun. Aha! And it, is, it is called a blast pipe. A blast pipe. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Bob throws this uh, this lasso like hundreds of feet to the other yeah. side of this ravine, and the rope loops around the uh, the blast pipe, makes it bend for no, like no, seemingly no because good of the reason. force, right? Because as he grapples it, it's um, it's his weight moving in the opposite direction but not um, at a great speed, right? So it makes sense that it would bend. That part of the train isn't that strong. But what doesn't make sense is what follows. Yeah, and immediately it pulls pulls Bob forward, and he fucking supermans all the way across. Yeah, he doesn't pull himself up it. it. It flies up in the air instead of down. Yeah, he just like it doesn't even look like he's being pulled. It just looks like he's flying. Yeah, yeah, and um, he lands in the front, like the 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 front uh, car, the, the cab. Yeah, yeah, with the user and Enzo, who's tied it, up. And yeah. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> and Enzo has given him like a like a real pissed off face, and, for whatever um, reason. For I yeah, and um. The user turns around, probably very shocked, and sees Bob, and because he was kind of like manning the uh, the engine, and Bob goes, "You lose," and he grabs his neckerchief, um, or what is that? Uh, a bola tie? Yeah, bolus. Is that what it's called? Um, and rips it off of him, and apparently that's how you win this game. I, y- yes, like bo- bolo tie. Is that what it's supposed to be? I I couldn't tell. I didn't get a good look at it. Um, but he rips his tie or whatever it is off of him and says, "It's one of those and... cowboy ties." Cowboy ties, yeah, a bolo tie, right? When you cinch up, yeah. And um, he says, "You lose." And immediately upon that coming off of his neck, um, he goes like kind of he starts flailing his arms, and the 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 world turns purple, and you hear the computer voice say, "Game over." And I'm like, "Hold up." What? I that's you that's how you beat the user? Taking his tie off? Is that the equivalent of your shoes flying off in a video? He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I there's that, which I've never seen before. Usually they have to make the user lose some way, not just like take an article of clothing off, but what the fuck do I know? Maybe that's a reference to a game. If anyone listening knows why he won by pulling his... Maybe it's like a touch tag football where you have the little ribbons wrapped around your arm. (laughs) 
sure. You get it pulled off. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So the so the game's over, and uh, yeah, we're we're back at uh, outside of Dot's diner, and Bob and Enzo come zipping in, and Bob's like, "Dude, why the fuck did you do that?" And uh, yeah, he's basically yeah, like, "Why'd I had, you go I, in the game?" Yeah, why'd you go in the game? I had this plan, you know. You messed it up. I was going to kill myself. <laughs> and you screwed it up. And then as they're going towards the diner, out of like a, a portal tear thing, we see um, the lanky, long, creepy stranger like step through. And then across the parking lot, Bob and Enzo like whirl their head around. And they see, which this is one of the plus sides of the this episode for me maybe you thought it was corny i kind of think it's fucking rad we see old man pearson like step through a fucking portal and he's got like a janky ass helmet and like a, a wizard staff of his own and i'm like holy shit <laughs> rad <laughs> he came out of retirement actually that, hoping it's not rad I, I... Sorry, go ahead I was hoping he was going to be a bug man too. And like his binome form is just him in disguise. Oh, like he's got some like crazy wacky, like net creature form. Yeah. Which is his true form. I think it's kind of funnier that he's just this like <laughs> old one binome, <laughs> which means that like there are multiple races and sprites and binomes. Like it's not like one type is more powerful than the other. There's different right. like entities that can be code masters. Mm -hmm. but i mean he waddles around he's old man pearson the other code master has these like long legs and can like leap like 50 feet into the air yeah so i feel like physically without their wizard staffs the other guys got the physical advantage and uh yeah um enzo turn because bob is looking in surprise and he's like wait a second old man pearson is ta uh talon and then Enzo, man, Enzo's pissing me off. He's like, that's what I entered the game to tell you, Bob. And I'm like, motherfucker, you were next to Bob when you thought it might be old man Pearson. Why didn't you tell him then? Mm-hmm. Why do you have to tell him after? it? That, like, um, comical, like, like bad timing rem reminds me of the episode with... Um, the um bomb mask it's like oh ba your bomb's the car and it's this like comedy of errors i don't i don't like that because he was right next to bob um or fong yeah he was next to bob and fong when he heard them call it a gibson coil pike yeah and he was like oh and then he ran off to go talk to old man pearson why didn't he bring tell bob then uh, and anyways, that already happened. Moving on. Um, he's like, that's why I entered the game, to tell you. Well, couldn't it have wait, waited? Why does that also change why he needed to enter the game? Like, why does that change things? Because here's the thing. Them finding out um, old man Pearson is Talon doesn't change the outcome that happens here. No. Do you remember that one episode you really hated because everything Bob did basically didn't do anything and then Dot ended up saving herself in the background? So it's like we followed Bob, like, scramble around and do all this stuff, but then everything ended up okay off-screen because of stuff like Dot did, and you're like, plot-wise, that's really weak. Yeah. That's kind of what's happening here, and I don't... I, I, think, I think it's weak. <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, any, yeah. I I'm yeah. with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um there's a there's one cool part. Um I like how man maybe this like stranger is actually like really naive and stupid because he says the stupidest line in the whole episode and I will defend that with every breath I have. He says, "Are you Codemaster Talon?" No shit. He just can't <laughs> he's holding a Gibson Pike and Gibson Coil Pike. <laughs> and came through a portal. A Gibson Les Paul. <laughs> I wish. That would be rad. <laughs> and then they have a rock off, and he's like, that's all I wanted. Cheers, mate. And he takes off. Yeah. 
Old that would man be Pier- better Old man episode. Pearson is like, I've always wanted to do that, and then steps through a portal. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that leave me alone. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, he goes, are you Codemaster Talon? Of course he is, bro. Anyways, for the five-year-olds watching, they need to explain. And uh, Pearson's like, I am the one you seek. You bloody bastard. Yeah, and, and Bug, um, Bugman is basically like, oh, uh, uh, then I challenge you. And well, he says a bunch of like names. He's like, I lens the clear unfolding, lens the reaper, mother of dragons, high <laughs> lens of the 62nd Brotherhood. Oh, right, right, yeah. So uh, I guess lens is his name? Lens, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember thinking that the other day, actually. I forgot about that. I'm like, oh, I guess his name is Lens. Breaker of Chains. Cool. (laughs) Hereby do challenge you, Brother Talon. And he calls him Brother. Yeah. So he's just, he's not here for an assassination. And he says, I challenge you to high spar. So he just wants to dick wave against him. So, presumably, reading between the lines here, Old Man Pearson was the best of the best, and this youngster, this incredibly naive youngster who doesn't even know what a fucking game is, um, (laughs) came here to, like, Jedi battle him for honor. It's not even, like, a target he's being paid for. Which is better, since we were talking about Highlander, (laughs) I guess. And then uh, Old Man Pearson's like, um, it, it it fits with our meta narrative, I yeah, guess. I, <laughs> <laughs> we make things more interesting than they actually are, folks. And old man Pearson's like, "Here we are, born to be kings. I accept your challenge." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and <laughs> if only, right? Now he he's actually like, "Well, I deny ye," and he like snaps his, like, Gibson coil pike in half, which is strange because he just put it back together. Like, he, look, if you look at it on screen right now, it's, like, three or four or five parts, like, put back together. He, like, painstakingly, like, put his, like, Gibson coil pike back together so he could come here and snap it in half. To make a statement, damn it. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even like broken, broken because we've seen um, lenses uh, come in half like that. So it's not even broken, actually. Now that I think of it, mm. remember it comes yeah, in like half. Yeah, it's a good point. It's meant to come apart, right? And he's like, "I left a long time ago, and you could tell the uh, you could tell the guild masters that I'm out of circulation." And, uh, yeah, Lens is all like, well, fuck that. Once uh, Code Gasher, always Code Gasher. No one leaves the guild. It is tradition. Yep. Tradition. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he does this weird, like, extendo thing with his limbs. Yeah, he, like, stretches his arms and like toes and legs out yeah like, all of his limbs like limbs like extend and he gets like super tall but he doesn't get bigger he just like unfolds the back of his legs as if they were like insect legs like grasshopper legs yeah it's really weird looking creepy and and weird and like unnecessary like you're already bigger than him he's a three foot high binome <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a good point <laughs> who is unarmed I might. Oh yeah, who's unarmed? He he not only snapped his thing in half, he threw it away. Yeah. So it's like, bro, yeah, we get it. You're you're already seven feet tall, so now you're fourteen feet tall. Cool. And now you're gonna like <laughs> like wizard blast this unarmed old man. Okay. I guess that makes you the cool guy. And old man Pearson just stands there like defiantly. Yeah, and then he uh uh points his Gibson Les Paul at uh, old man Pearson and then swings it up into the air and then shoots something into the sky. A purple beam? 
Yeah, and the sky turns like purple and various red. shades of like purple and red. And it's like, like a game fuchsia. coming down, but it's all like it's it's different. It's like fuchsia, red, purples. Yeah, and then Bob is like, "It's a paradigm shift. I can't let this happen." And I'm like, <laughs> "What the fuck is a paradigm shift in this context?" Like, I know what I know what a paradigm shift is, but like, what is it in this context? In in reboot, yeah, yeah. and we never see it again. And we'll never find out. It's a, it's a bad thing. <laughs> I, apparently. I, it's one of those things where we're like, all of these questions and more will never won't, be answered. <laughs> won't be answered ever at any point. It's, it's a spooky thing. Ooh, it's going to destroy mainframe or something. Yeah. And so uh, Bugman starts like... Why did he do that? It's like, oh, if you won't fight me, I'm going to paradigm shift mainframe i does that make him stronger i don't understand the intention of whatever anyways he storms towards old man pearson yeah and he's about to step on him and then bob gets in the way and is like no i can't let you do that and then uh enzo and dot, episode enzo and dot are do the same thing and uh bugman is like like you would risk your lives for this asshole. And they're like, yeah, call it a mainframe tradition. Yeah. And, um, Enzo and dot and Bob are like standing there defiantly to yeah. defend old man Pearson. Um, but in the distance it shows Frisket and Fong just standing there. <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, you guys gonna show some solidarity? <laughs> no, we have you covered from over here. <laughs> Fong's like, I can go near that guy. Fong's just over there like, ooh, I think I'm just going to sit this one out. <laughs> um, oh, Greek action. <laughs> <laughs> Pinnacle descent. <laughs> you... Would it be funny if it actually doesn't matter what he says, as long as he just makes up some bullshit, it just recognizes his voice? It just but knows just, what he wants. Yeah, yeah, he just, like, says just <laughs> gibberish, and he gets what he wants. And uh, uh, <laughs> this uh, lens, the stranger, is like, you mean to tell me this old binome is so important that something, something, something... Honor. Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the code. <laughs> yeah. And um, Bob, having like read between the lines, he goes, Yes, we all would. It's a mainframe tradition. And now we do get a shot. This is actually a nice shot of Fong and Frisket are now with the group. And yeah. They're all like kind of defiantly like looking up at him. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bugman is like, I have searched far and uh, of all the places i've traveled far and wide throughout the net i'm paraphrasing but yeah. um uh i have not seen such a display of he says a, a blatant or, contemptuous display of and friend. um and so is like friendship <laughs> and he's like honor and i'm like Really? Like, you've never seen anyone stand up for someone else? Ever? <laughs> like, at what? any point? Really? Everyone even you've once? encountered is a coward? I mean, I guess if he doesn't even know what the fuck a game is, anything's possible. We I find out he's only... This, this guy's second day. <laughs> I was about to say, we find out this is only, like... This is only, like, the first system he's ever been to. It has to be, right? And he goes, let it be known from this day forward that Talon is no more. I will tell the guild it is so. And um, he extends his staff and undoes the, uh, the little barrier over Glitch. And he kind of does a bow as if the show realizes that it's running out of time. And uh, he like walks through a portal and leaves. And when he goes through the portal, this one like turns into a laser, shoots up into the sky, hits the, the ceiling of the, this flat world, this flat earth, the dome, yeah. and um, all the purple paradigm shift bullshit like disappears through a, like, a little pinhole alongside uh, presumably the, the creature. 
the stranger. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everything's good. He's gone. Yeah. And uh, uh, old man Pearson walks Just away. Walks away. And is like grumbling. And he's like, basically just like what did you do that for i'm an old man leave me alone yeah they're like wow i can't believe you're a talon oh i knew you could do it hooray wow are you really and he's just like ah always bothering me trying to make an old man sick and he takes off his like battle samurai helmet and throws it at enzo <laughs> and he catches battle it Sam- you say battle samurai helmet i say construction hat oh <laughs> yeah maybe it was a construction hat it looks much more like a construction it hat. did yeah <laughs> uh all and, right uh, that's the episode folks yeah that has been the second episode of the second season of reboot the fuck is this episode even called again right it high was code. called high code uh fong, here was, on... uh fong was riding some high code most here of the on... episode here on alphanumeric we rate episodes on the alphanumeric scale which ranges from i don't think so to or no this fuck this I is fuck bad that, i fuck that up every <laughs> single week it's, it's essentially like like one to four or zero to three if you will yeah yeah right? this is bad very bad to i don't think so to that was easy enough to alphanumeric so uh cal what do you rate this episode Okay, well, if there's two good ones and two bad ones, right? It's not on the good end. <laughs> hmm. What is it? So I, I usually try to reflect and go, okay, what was good? Is there anything memorable? I, Old Man Pearson being a Jedi is kind of cool. But we only get like 15 seconds of that. Uh, this is bad. Very yeah, bad. I'm with you. This is like the least interested I've been in an episode of this show thus far. I think this is the worst episode I've seen. And uh, we, yeah. we, there, there are some, some, uh, yeah. stank, there are some stankers in season one. <laughs> And There's a whole yeah. episode where uh, we just did the Energon farts episode of Too Much Energon. <laughs> but there's a whole episode of Frisket like farting and burping. <laughs> and I still think that's better than this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, In the Belly of the Beast. Yeah, that was uh, that was my pick for the worst episode of season one. And uh yeah, I think this episode might actually be worse than that I, one. I think it's worse. This might be the worst episode of Reboot. <laughs> also, I'd like just like to point out uh, that Spuzzum is a town in BC. Oh. I just found this out on Wikipedia. Spuzzum is a town in BC. That's yeah. the province we're from. Yeah, that's the province where we live. Uh, it's in the interior. We live on an island, folks. So, an I've ne- island. Ooh. I, I've never lived in the interior. Oh, you've always been an islander. Yep. Well, I've lived. Uh, I well, I've lived a, on like in Vancouver, and I've lived uh, on the prairies, but I've never actually lived in the interior of BC. Oh, okay. Uh, you're not missing anything. Uh, I think we're in the best. One of the better parts of Canada. I uh, I had someone on a, uh, a a Discord chat the other day tell me they're like, "Oh, you're live you're living on an island like uh, that." Because yeah, I was like complaining about uh, stuff I deal with every day uh, at my work, and they're like, "Oh, I can't like you live on an island. That sounds really tranquil and idyllic." Like, uh, kind of a, like, everybody knows your name kind of thing. Like, I, I don't, like, what are you complaining about? And I'm like, no, everybody does not know your name. I live in a city that has, like, almost half a million people. <laughs> and they're like, oh. Yeah, greater, yeah. They're like, oh. <laughs> what island is it? And I sent them a Wikipedia link to it. And they're like, oh, 
I didn't know an island could be that big. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. Well, there are bigger think, what ones. What do you think? Is, <laughs> what do you think every continent is? Yeah, uh, uh, I guess the definition of island. I, I get it, varies, like when but you, I mean, I when think you, of Japan as an island, a series like, of islands. I get it. Like when you when you hear island, especially if you're from someone who lives in like a like uh, I don't know, like say the continental United States, and you hear like like if you live in like the Midwest or something, and you hear island, you think of like just like this tiny little thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. You're not thinking there's like a million people living on it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and go live via satellite with uh, the Sniddler's impressions of this That's episode. Right. And by live via satellite, I mean live via satellite in the WWE sense, where it is a pre-recorded thing that they try and pretend <laughs> is actually live, but it isn't. All right. So, so take, take it away. It, take it away, Sniddler. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Alpha Numeric. I am your other, other host, A.P. Sniddler. Today, we're going to be discussing uh, 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 one of the, uh, well, <clears throat> the mother of all throwaway episodes, in my opinion. Uh, we are on episode two, season two, High Code. Which, of course, is a play on words uh, based on the uh, 1952 Western film High Noon, which is a thing that I know. Apparently, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know how it's significant. And yes, directed by, directed by who? Directed by Michael Robinson. Well, someone's getting fired. That was an abomination. <laughs> oh, blimey. Alpha numeric. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and binomes. Sprites and... And pixels. <laughs> High code. Until next time. Um... I need a good sign off. Until next time, stay frosty. And we're back. Thank you, Sandler, wow. for your Thanks, for your thoughts. That was a a very insightful take. Um, I was. I was really surprised to hear that you that you liked the episode as much as you did. Um, uh, so an alphanumeric rating from you. I wasn't wasn't expecting that, but you know, or it's, were uh, we? It's it's your take, man. It's your take. Um, I'm with yeah, <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, that's that's our time, folks. Uh, best way to support the show is if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. Give us a five star rating; helps us out with discoverability. Uh, also, check out our website www.alphanumericpodcast.ca, where you can find embedded players of every single episode of this show, uh, social media links, and more. Uh, if you want to send it, get in touch with us. You can send us an email at alphanumeric podcast or alphanumeric pod pod at mm, outlook.com yeah. um we did get a uh youtube comment from another youtube comment from cone killer confusor uh this is in regards to episode 11 of season one talent night he says i was really looking forward to your chat about the primitives Unfortunately, it seems the significance of it went over your heads in CGI terms. Primitives are the simplest shapes, cone, sphere, and cube. They play a very jazzed up version of the reboot theme and then form the reboot icon, uh, icon logo, showing that the logo is derived from the combinations of the three primitive shapes. And later, game sprite mode is shown to be a different organization of those same three shapes. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't even think of that. Uh, if you recall when when that uh, three shape band played in that episode, I oh. thought it was the EA logo. <laughs> yeah, I remember you and and Sniddler going on about the EA logo, and I just kept quiet. Um, I think I might have briefly mentioned I was like, oh well, it's just you know uh, a square, a, a circle, and a triangle. Like I I knew what the primitives were, but like. For to to reply to him, not not to sound argumentative, um, like the we want we want the show is already like two hours. We don't have time <laughs> to like gruelingly go over every little reference, and that episode is chock full of them. We could spend oh, yeah, four yeah. hours combing over every single little like reference to everything in that. And to me, I didn't bring it up. Like, I, I took basic, like, art theory and all that stuff, right? Like, I'm aware that you can essentially make anything out of the three primitives. Well, and, I didn't know that, so I'm learning things. And yeah, and it, it was brought up, and the little band name was called that, and they made the logo. And remember, they, like, look at their chest, and they're like, so that's what it is. Yeah. It, it could have been an interesting topic of discussion, especially since I just thought it was the EA logo <laughs> from uh, the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's interesting, and then moving on. Yeah, sometimes things... I, I thought it was self-explanatory. I just didn't think it was that interesting. Yeah, well... But, uh, what you gonna I mean, do? Yeah, Cone Killer Confusor uh, seemed to be into it, so, uh, yeah, thanks for commenting, bud. Um, well, maybe we'll... there is something to that. Yeah. Right, like, well... maybe maybe there there was something worth talking about there, so I'll I'll concede on on that. I mean, God knows I've wasted time talking about less important things than stonks than art theory, like 10 <laughs> mi- like 15 minutes talking about like stonks when I'm not even giving like an informed opinion. <laughs> but it uh, ended with Dogecoin, so it all Yeah, what are what are what's your Dogecoin at now? Uh Dogecoin is at Bear with me folks. Checking up on my Doge coin. It is at oh, the live point zero zero nine one one nine hasn't changed much. It sounds like it go- went up slightly. I think that was about the same as I last checked. But hey, right. what you gonna do? It ain't no Ethereum. <laughs> All right. Well, well. We'll uh we'll follow up on the Dogecoin in <laughs> <laughs> in subsequent episodes. We'll be um we'll be back next week with the third episode of season two of Reboot when games collide. Um I remember liking this episode, and I actually remember liking I think every episode going forward in season two. So oh, okay. uh, there's there's some light uh at the the end of this uh this cowboy game train tunnel i don't <laughs> yeah i don't <laughs> remember the next one it's all really fuzzy from here on out yeah they uh 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 bob and megabyte end up having to to work together in a game oh that sounds rad yeah i wonder if i caught this one eh, it'll probably come back to me once we start watching Yep, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, And until then, I have been one of your hosts, Christopher Siege. I am your other host, NeoCal. And until next week... Beast Mode! A reboot! A reboot. Codemaster! (laughs) If it's Cat and Mouse Bob, how about some cheese? (laughs) Uh, that was the best thing of that episode (laughs) Uh, i'm going i'm probably going to reference it every episode going forward so dogecoin bye-bye bye reboot will return after these messages